We need diversity in Congress in places like Congress. You would think the Democratic Party would embrace, you know, a woman, a new face. That's not necessarily the case, but my attitude is bring it on. I'm actually going to twist this around a bit and say that I'm disappointed in people on our side. This is a party that was ready to endorse Roy Moore, even though he was a credibly accused child molester. You cannot claim that you stand for women Not true. Not true. And, and put up with that. A woman's place is in her union. Let me add to that. A woman's place is in the House of Representatives. You are the resistors that say, hashtag me too, hashtag time's up. And we're changing it to hashtag enough, period. Snap! Sister's not afraid of power. All right, are you ready for the revolution? Because with me are revolutionaries women who are speaking truth to power. Hello, everyone. I'm Zainab Selby. I am the founder of Women Women International and the host of Me Too, Now What? on PBS. Uh, it's just finished, so watch it again. <laughs> and as I said, with me are truly women who are speaking truth to power and trying to change the norms. So I want to start with Amy, actually with all of you. In this time, what do you think is the biggest single problem right now facing women as they are, as you are, as we all are, trying to affect change? You know, I, I think that we're, we're coming together and we're starting to talk about things that may, we may not have talked about before at, at a mass level. Um, I think the biggest problem, you know, I'm, I'm coming at this from, from, from a politics perspective, right? Um, I'll just be honest with you. We need more women in power. Okay, and and it, and it's 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 not that we, we're gonna you know take over the world or anything like that. It's it's simply that we need to be at the table. We need to be there when decisions are made um, about women, you know, about us. And that's I mean that's just the honest truth. We need to be there. And it's basic. Yeah. Right? It's I mean it's not rocket yeah. science. Yeah. Exactly. Mona? I want us to reclaim our power. Our sexual power is one kind of power that we gave up a long time ago when we decided, yeah, we're, we're down with the sexual revolution. That's all fine with us. And now I believe that the Me Too movement is a kind of a backlash. We're saying, whoa, take your hands off me, fella. You know, you need to, you need to back off because it's not okay. And if we can begin to reestablish some norms about how we expect to be treated as women, we will regain our self-respect and we will, we will gain the respect of men. Elise? I concur with my sisters. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I would add that um, we have to look at pay equity yeah. and the, the poverty of women and children in this country and in the world. Yeah. And until we deal with that, then we're just going to be, we have to deal with the political, the social, we have to deal with the economic. Mm -hmm. Right on. So I want to go back to Amy because you sort of rocked the boat when you decided to run for Congress. Right. Con well, I'm uh, used to doing that. <laughs> 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 and you released this video that just mm. stole everyone's hearts, actually, including mine. So let's take a look first. When I was 12 years old, I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I grew up. I wanted to fly fighter jets and land on aircraft carriers because that's the toughest flying you can do. When I was 13, my congressman told me I couldn't fly in combat. He said Congress thought women ought to be protected and not allowed to serve in combat. I never got a letter back from my Senator Mitch McConnell. This is my new mission, to take on a Congress full of career politicians who treat the people of Kentucky like they're disposable. Some are telling me a Democrat can't win that battle in Kentucky. We'll see about that. <laughs> you go, sister. <laughs> How are you doing? <laughs> well, you it's been know, seven months, and oh. and so the race is a challenge, which is awesome because I'm up for that. 
you know, I think that, that the biggest surprise for me has been um, uh, the establishment on uh, my own side, on the Democratic Party side. Um, and, you know, when we talk about um, a party that in, in embraces, you know, equality and women and, and wanting us uh, at the table, um, it's the establishment is, is, is still tough, a tough nut to crack. And so, but it doesn't matter because if you're motivated, um, you can get around them and you just have to be persistent. So but wait, Nancy Pelosi doesn't support you? You know, um, the, the establishment uh, in the, uh, the <laughs> DCCC, which is the um, Democratic uh, Congressional Campaign Committee, uh, recruited um, the, the older um, big city mayor of Lexington, who is very um, well connected within the party, to, to run uh, five months after I got in the race and raised over a million dollars. So, oh. I mean, this is, this is uh, it, it's, it's part of the problem with our system. And it really affects, you know, both sides. This isn't, this isn't a Republican thing. It isn't a Democrat thing. The establishment on both sides is very entrenched. Um, but what did you see, you know, in, in Texas in the, in the primaries last night? What we saw is that, you know, voters are, 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 are tired of it. Voters are tired of the establishment sort of picking the winners. And um, they want people from all walks of life. And they want uh, people who speak truth to power. And they want people who are honest and, uh, and, and women. And, and I think that um, we're, we're starting to figure this out in America here. I, and I'm sure we will. I hope so, actually. Mona, you recently also rocked the boat as you were speaking at a f uh, about feminism at a CPAC uh, conference. I want to take a look first before I ask you the question. So let's take a look. I'm disappointed in people on our side okay. for being hypocrites about uh, sexual harassers and abusers of women who are in our party, who are sitting in the White House, who brag about their extramarital affairs, who brag about mistreating women. This is a party that was ready to um, endorse, the Republican Party endorsed Roy Moore uh, for th the Senate in the state of Alabama, even though he was a credibly accused child molester. You cannot claim that you stand for women Not true. Not true. And, and put up with that. <laughs> Just to be clear, you're speaking about your own party in That's here. So my you're party. challenging your own party. What <laughs> motivated you to do it's that? Still your party. Uh, pretty much. I yeah. mean, you know. Look, I, I spoke because I think there are millions of people, conservatives, women, good people in the Republican Party who are dismayed and disgusted by the Trumpian uh, tone of the whole party in, in the last two years and who want to see people stand up and rebut it and mm -hmm. call it, you know, I won't use that bad term, but uh, call them out, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and so, and, I, and I've received a tremendous amount of positive response since then. Um, but look, I'm gonna admit, it is a challenge now. Um, you know, it's a, it's a weird situation to have people say, well, we're in a culture war, but somehow we conservative Republicans have wound up on the side of the guy who has Playboy magazines all over his office and is a thrice married, proud womanizer and who harasses women and brags about it. You know, it's like, when did this flip suddenly happen where that's what we're defending? Yeah, I can see you saying. <laughs> I could feel like I'm that. trying to think of when. I, I think it happened maybe 20 years ago. But um, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. no. Well, 20 years ago was Bill Clinton. I mean, Bill Clinton was the one who was the abuser, and all the, all the Democrats got in line and said, "Well, you know, we'll excuse this one because he's on our side. You know, we're not going to speak up about Bill Clinton." And um, so there's a lot of hypocrisy to go around. Well, and it's catching us all up in many different ways, all of us as a collective. Elise, you have a history of activism as the president of the National Coalition of Labor Union Women. How has the women's movement evolved over the last decades? I mean, you've been an activist since the 60s. How, and, and, and how is it, is it, what, is there anything unique about today's activism? Um, yes, there is. Uh, I, w I won't say unique, but I, I have to also say that um, I wasn't quite the feminist uh, at the age of uh, 
10, 11, and 12, which is I was in the 60s, as I was in the 70s, once I went to college. Um, and that's where, you know, I, I got the consciousness. It was really um, simultaneous, really. My consciousness about the black action movement and black power, and my consciousness that as a woman, um, I was discriminated against. And sometimes that was within the, the African-American organizations themselves where the men took the leadership and the women did the cooking in the kitchen and the, the making of the picket signs and et cetera. Um, and so, yeah, we, you know, we were saying we, we want to be there, you know, whatever I wear, wherever I go, yes means yes and no means no. And now I think that the, the awakening that's happened, I think n not in any small part due to who's in the White House, uh, has brought uh, lots of women together, and a variety of women, uh, a diversity of women. Um, the LGBTQ community uh, sisters no longer have to be out there by themselves or isolated. They can be in the room, in the march, uh, marching proudly uh, as, as uh, lesbian and Q, queer sisters. Uh, and I think that the, the, the delineation between class, I mean, a lot of the the, the writers and proponents of the uh, women's movement in the 70s were women who came from educated backgrounds, largely white women, uh, and then there were women like um, uh, Toni Morrison who came along and Alice Walker who introduced the term womanist to say that for us as African American women it's a little bit different when we're looking at feminism. We weren't on a pedestal. We didn't have to fall off. We weren't gonna give up anything. My mother and the women that I grew up with worked every day of their lives. There was never any question in my life that I'd have to work. And you think it's changed, that dynamics? I, and I, the woman's movement with it in particular, or the narrative? Yeah, no, I think, I think, it, I think it's more transcending it from class. Okay. I think there are uh, more working class women who are involved and active. Uh, and I think there are more women of color who are involved and active. Uh, and I think that's making a big difference. That's true. Mm -hmm. That is true, yeah. So, so talking about bringing women together, you know, Amy, yeah. you brought parties together in your own household. You're running right. the Democratic ticket. Your husband is a Republican. Yeah. What would it, and, and here we are in a very diverse political parties and yeah. backgrounds and all of these things. I mean, what do you think, um, do you think this tense political climate can unite women from all spectrum in America? Well, I hope so. I mean, because that is America. You know, I mean, we all have people in our family who, who we aren't just all Democrats or all Republicans. We're, 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 we're America, and we have um, differences of opinion. I mean, I think we need to, to come together and actually start talking about some of these things and not labeling the other side as they're all this or they're all that. I mean, that's one of the things that, that, that I'm trying to do in Kentucky. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm running in Kentucky. That's where I'm from. Um, you know, people there... Uh, you know, many of them, when I sit down at the table uh, at uh, the diners, they, they just want us to come together as elected officials. They want elected officials to work together again. They're tired of the divisiveness. And so, you know, that's, that, that's kind of why I'm doing this. I think I can make a difference. If I, if I didn't think I could make a difference, I wouldn't run. And, and Mona, I mean, I, yet some people saying we should not normalize relationship. We should not, like, we should keep the division. This is the way to fight this, this divis divisive moment. Uh, look, our society is so riven right now. The polarization is so extreme. People are just marinating in hatred for the other side. And it's interesting, you know, as we um, have fewer attachments to our local community, to our families, to our churches, we seem to have glommed on to our identity as Republicans and Democrats, mm -hmm. as our identity that, that, you know, people don't, there's a recent survey that found that people don't want their children to marry outside the party. Can you imagine? Wow. They don't want their children to bring home a Democrat or Republican, depending on what they are. It's crazy, and, and it's, it's beyond that. It's really destructive of our civic health and uh, something that I worry about a lot. And um, regarding women, look, there, we're going to have serious disagreements on policy questions, the minimum wage, or whatever it is. We're going to have disputes. But I do hope that the Me Too movement moment can be a time for us to at least bring to public policy, some of the one, more wonderful aspects of femininity, namely our natural human sympathy, which, uh, I mean, I'm not saying men don't have it, they do, but women have a capacity for making connections that's even a little more advanced than men. 
And um, I'm hoping that we can begin to, to bridge some of those divides because a lot of them are artificially created by talk television and talk radio and the internet and, um, and they're really, d they're destroying our sense of national unity. So, yeah, I want to address yes. this, yeah. okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is all from the white people's perspective. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's this great division in this country. There's greater than it's ever been before. Every person of color in this audience will tell you it was always there. Yes? Amen? Can I hear amen? Yeah. No, 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 no. It's just been exposed in a way. It wasn't like those people suddenly invented their racism. It was always there. And, and when I remember when the Washington Post ran an article when Barack Obama was elected that said, is the racial playing field even now? And does the NAACP have a purpose anymore? I was like, did you watch the campaign? Yeah. Did you understand what they brought out and said and tried to do to this man who had to have, had to be smarter and had to be half white to become president of the United States? No, 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 no. These divisions have existed. It is not because, it's not the cause of our problem. It is merely a symptom of a greater problem. But I, I do believe, and, and I'm, I'm coming from the military where I worked with people from all walks of life and from uh, different ethnicities and and one of the things that I loved about the military, and it's not, it's not perfect, but performance really mattered. And um, when, when you had a unit, I mean, whether you were black or white and, and uh, male or female, uh, it, if you were good and you were a Marine, um, you know, we, we looked out for each other. And I, I just believe that with good leadership, with people who get into office and and actually lead this country, and we can do better. We can unite, we can come together. It's never gonna be perfect, but I'm, I'm just an idealist, and I, and I do believe that with, because I've seen it, I've seen it happen. I've seen people come together. I've seen um, you know, men and women able to work together in a professional way. Maybe I'm naive. No, that's but, why there were but millions I, but of women I, marching in Washington, you know, D.C. That's what we need. We it's need more, more leadership. Absolutely. More and you know, doing. in the military, let's talk about the military for a moment. I mean, that's, that was a working class way of getting a job. Right? That's, what, that's, what, that's who's in the military. It's like, I remember my nephews and my sisters saying, my, uh, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do when I go to college. I don't want to go to college. I'm not sure if I'm doing the trade. I'll go in the military. Right, and that was a place where they some did, lived, but some went in because I'm they genuinely wanted to serve their country. I'm not talking about your family. I'm talking about my family. Serve their country. I'm, I'm talking about my. Right? I mean, isn't that a motivation too? Don't you, wasn't that your motivation to serve? Yes. Uh huh. It's not for everybody. I mean, everybody has a different reason for going. So I, I, I'm I understand speaking that. from my experience. You can speak from yours. Uh, that's my experience. And yeah, the the higher calling of serving, and 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 certainly the ads have promoted that. But I think that if more jobs were, if we had more union jobs, if we had better paying jobs, if we had jobs that paid at least $15 an hour, I don't think as many people would be volunteered to go into the military. So what I'm hearing from I, I, How about doing public service, not right. just the military, how about the Peace Corps? Yes. What I'm hearing is we need to consolidate all the issues, the economics, the sexual, the, the political. We need, to con we need to look at it as one thing rather than this is what I'm hearing from you, actually. I mean, I'm, I may be wrong in here. But the question I continue and ask, it's not easy. It's not easy to consolidate. It's not easy to speak truth to power. There is a price. There is a penalty. There is a sacrifice that you need to do it sometimes. I mean, unfortunately. So what, what has, you know, and, and then you're like, you're just like oh, well, how can we get it together? Is there common ground? Can we do that? So you're saying use your emotional intelligence. Our, our emo you know, you're saying that our loyalty to the country, the love. You know, you're saying let's bring the economics back together. And so what? Are, but let's talk about the price a little bit or the sacrifice. Did you? What's what's? How has it been that journey? I mean, you, you do you have enough support? Do you have enough money? In, in do you have in enough? The, you know, in this campaign, to win? In politics? Yes, 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 yes. Um, you know, I, I've gotten an enormous amount of support from people who, who care, not only in Kentucky, but around the country. But um, the, the unfortunate thing about politics today, and many of you know this, is money in politics is, is absolutely corrosive. It is absolutely corroding our, our, our country. And so what you, who do you see running? You see millionaires running who can self-fund. Um, that's who I'm going against. Um, so I, I have to reach out to, to people around the country, around the, uh, the district, and ask for money. And, and that's the only way you can compete. 
Um, is it going? Yeah, it's, it's going okay. But it's a constant slog with trying to do that. And it, you have to do it because you have to be able to compete uh, in, in a campaign. So right now I have about 17,000 donors uh, around the country, which is really awesome. Um, but we need to reach more because it, it's, it's about getting people um, elected, getting women elected, and being at the table, people who care about this country. I'm not running for anything, but if anyone wants to send me money, please go right ahead. <laughs> <laughs> but but you heard, but you spoke up, and I mean, and you had a nerve in that speaking up. Did that come with a prize? Did it? Did, you know, how was it? Well, I was ferociously nervous the day that I did that panel. Um, I knew it was not going to be well received, and I don't like conflict. You know, I like to be liked, like most people. And, uh, <laughs> I, I like us too. <laughs> you do? I do. I love All going right. on conservative talk radio. It gives me a chance to go to battle again. <laughs> Good, for Good for you. Good for you. Yeah, bring um, it on. But, um, so I, but I will do it if I feel I have to. And, and in this instance, I just, this, it was beyond uh, what I could tolerate, and I felt it, it was important to speak. So, well, um, what is the nerve that you touched, you know, you think? Um, I think that this whole um, this whole Trump edifice is being held up by you know big pumps of hot air, mm -hmm. and um, people are afraid that if you take a tiny little pin and that it'll all just explode, and so everybody's you know a lot of people in the Republican Party are busy manning the pumps <laughs> like so nobody will notice you know <laughs> that he is what he is which is a big you know big mess and. Um, <laughs> Well, why aren't more people saying that in well, the Republican Party? I don't know party? why. I don't know. I mean, I Where's think Where's the leadership? There's, it's appalling. Um, and, you know, when it comes to something like the tariffs, um, now they're finally speaking up. But it's a problem <laughs> because this entire year, every time he did something irresponsible or, or just defamatory or ugly, they said, oh, you know, don't pay any attention to that, or, you know, they, they said it, it, it didn't matter. And, and so they basically legitimized him, and now that they really want to make a strong case against tariffs, which could be really, really bad for our country, um, I think they've lost some moral authority to, um, to make that case. Well, we have a few moments left, <laughs> so I'll start with you, Elise. Your call to action for all women. What can we do right now to bring the country united, as, at least as women? What can we do? Um, sometimes we have to ignore the labels. Um, just because someone's a Republican doesn't mean they're racist. Just because someone's a Democrat doesn't mean they're on the right side. There are libertarians, there's Green Party, there's socialists, and we need to be looking at the candidates and what they're talking about and what they've done, because action speaks louder than words. And, to, I, and I'm all for supporting women candidates. I think, that, I think the Republicans should start a Jeanette Rankin you know, society. Jeanette Rankin is the Republican mm -hmm. woman who voted both against World War I and World War II. And she isn't held so she wasn't honest. so great, but <laughs> <laughs> she was a single vote. She was a resister. She was a resister. She was willing to stand up for what she believed in in a, in a sea of men mm. saying that she was wrong. So I, I think one of the things I'm working on is, mm. is in, within the Coalition of Labor Union Women is to get women the training they need to step up and speak out, to get women the training they need to run for office. Mm to get women the training they need to step up in leadership positions in their unit, unions, not just appointed positions, because if you're appointed, you can be disappointed, but into elected positions, which is what you understand. <laughs> yep. Mona? What was the question? <laughs> your, call, your call to action. Call to action. Um, well, first, I want everyone to buy my book, which <laughs> comes out in June, called Sex Matters. Um, and it explores a number of issues, I think, that are important to all of us as women, including, by the way, let me just give a little shout out to Christine Lagarde. I loved what she said about making room for love. Um, I think it's so important when we women talk to each other that we recognize that there are two sides, there are two parts of the human race and that our happiness cannot be purchased at the expense of men's or vice versa, that we're, we're part of families and, and uh, th that unit is the most important one in our lives. Um, and, um, but regarding um, 
regarding issues of Me Too and, and sexual harassment and so on, as I said earlier, I really do hope that women are now going, that this, that, that, that this has been the crossing of a Rubicon and that we won't go back, that women will recognize that th they do not have to put up with that kind of treatment. And finally, I would just say this, and this is kind of in the book too, but we have to be a little bit more realistic about what human nature is like and what men are like. And when I read those stories about these young women going up to Harvey Weinstein's hotel room, I thought, no, you know, nobody told them, you don't have to do that. Don't do that. It's inappropriate for your boss to ask you to come to his hotel room under any circumstances unless you're married to him. <laughs> so that those are the kinds of lines that I would like to see women begin to draw very firmly for themselves, for their colleagues, and, uh, and in their families. And I think they will, Amy. Yeah, I mean, I, I think, look, uh, the election of 2016 and Donald Trump, whether you like him or not, he, he changed a lot of us, okay? It changed me. Um, I, for, for somebody who has served her country in the military, um, it, my response to that was not, oh, hell no. You know, it was, oh, hell no. <laughs> I, am, I, 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 am not, I am not accepting of this. I'm not accepting, not in, not in America. And, um, and, and so what I would tell people and, and sort of my call to action, I guess, is, you know, if you, if you want to run for something, do it. Now is the time. Um, you know, as women, we get elected at the same rate as men. The reason there are 19% women in Congress right now is because we don't run. Wow. We're not running. We're going to change that in 2018, but we need everybody's help. <laughs> and, and if you're interested in running, if, you, if, th if that's a calling for you, go do it, because that's what we need in this country. We need more people stepping up. And this is the moment. This is the moment. This is the moment. Uh, here we are on International Women's Day tomorrow and the Women's Day and the Women's March, and it's united the country, at least women in the country. So we may we always stand it stand united. Mm -hmm. And thank you so much, everyone. And here's Tina thank Brown. You. Thank you. Thank you.